Right, um, let's get going. Hello, thanks so much for, um, for joining me today for our RecTech Live webinar, um, part of our RecTech Live webinar series. My name is Lewis, um, I'm a senior account executive here at XREF, and today we will be covering the six steps to HR tech investment success. Um, this session should lead us nicely into lunchtime. It's, um, it's a lovely day here in Sydney and I hope it's just as nice wherever you are at the moment. Um, for those of you who joined us at the Australian Rectex Symposium earlier in the month, um, hello again. For those who weren't able to make it, we hope to see you next year. The Rectech Symposium is a celebration and a congregation of Australian recruitment technology, aiming to bring together innovative organizations and progressively minded HR and recruitment professionals to discuss and showcase the best Australia has to offer. Um, it was a great event here in Sydney and uh, promises to be even bigger and better in 2019. So as mentioned, I'm, uh, I'm Lewis Matthews. I've been here with XREF for the, for the last, uh, last three years. XREF was, was founded in, in 2011 with a clear mission to change the way references are being completed to allow faster, safer and smarter results. Over the past few years, we have grown from a small team of, uh, of just five, uh, five or six um, into an ASX listed organization with four offices um, across the globe and over 70 staff serving some of the largest public, private and government organizations across these regions. Um, the reason I mention this is, is not to brag or, or show off about where we've come, um, it's to paint the picture of, of what we've been doing in the last few years. Um, one of the key vehicles to our success was keeping in mind all of the principles that I'll share with you over the course of the next 30 minutes. Um, and I urge you to keep these in mind whenever you're looking to engage with any tech businesses to make sure that they can service you correctly and, uh, and, and give you that service that, uh, that, that you need in, in, in the market. What we'll cover today. I'd imagine some of you have joined the session today because you think you might want to look at um, investing in a HR tech solution but perhaps not 100% sure how to go about it and how to evaluate your options. So over the next 30 minutes, we're going to look at six key questions every business leader should ask themselves before investing in HR technology. I'll be running a few polls during the session. Um, so at those points, I'd love you to get involved um, and, uh, and cast your opinions where you can. We've allocated some time at the end for questions. So if anything does come to mind as, uh, as, I, as I babble on, um, please add it to the question section of the control panel and um, we'll get to those at the end. Um, now before we get going, um, we're gonna start with one of those polls. Um, we'll pop it up on the screen now. So, how, this is quite a broad question, but how confident would you feel at the moment about identifying the right HR tech solutions for your business? Excellent guys, get the, get the voting in. Fantastic. So I um, was a little bit worried that everyone would say very confident and probably uh, uh, place this webinar a little bit, uh, a little bit shorter. Um, but uh, as it stands, a number of you do seem to, to not be that confident in, in assessing um, you know, the right technology for the business. So hopefully over the course of this session, we'll, uh, we'll be able to help. So HR tech checklist, the six questions to ask. Without further ado, let's, uh, let's get going. And here are the six steps or questions you need to ask before investing in HR tech. Um, I'll offer a few action points as we go through these um, so that you can kind of take, um, take some steps away to go in action internally. Point number one, is it business critical? What I mean by this is how do we identify between what, um, what technology is nice to have or an add-on to the process and what is automating or innovating a current process that's critical to the business. There 
is a wealth of, of tech-based solutions flooding the market over, over the last few years. There's so many different apps and options available, it can be difficult to differentiate between them. Amongst the nice-to-haves, it's important for us to find um, the ones that will actually make a difference to the business's bottom line and stand out as the solutions your HR or recruitment team really need and um, what will stay true even at times when you know, budgets are tight and, uh, and cuts are being made across the business. So our first action point is to do an audit internally of where the majority of HR resources, so time, um, time and cost mainly, um, is currently being spent to help you identify the most likely areas that could benefit from um, a HR solution that will add real value. If you're pumping a lot of resources into particular processes, that could be a great area to look at innovation um, and driving efficiencies. So there it gives you a really good idea of, of what avenues to go down. We have a mantra here at XREF that if we need to touch a process three times, we look to automate it. Um, so that brings us on to, to the next poll. At, uh, at present, what part of the recruitment process do you see your team spending the most time on, but generating the least amount of value? Before you go back and, uh, and, and do the, the proper audit, what does it seem to be at uh, this stage? Right, so as we can see, the, the results starting to come in. It's actually really, really broad. Um, everyone's sort of choosing, nothing's really a standout there, which is, which is great to see. Obviously, there's um, different areas where um, different amounts of, of time and energy are being, um, are being expended. Um, there's some amazing products out there that can help in, in a variety of, of these different areas, and you're more than happy to, to point anyone in the right direction of what you're looking at. But I really encourage you to go back and do that audit and really dig into to where this is happening and where you can drive efficiencies. Point number two, is it enterprise ready? So I can imagine legal, technical and commercial compliance sits high on the priority list for a lot of you and, uh, and the processes that you follow on a daily basis. Unfortunately, not all software vendors and solutions are prepared to deal with the level of regulation and governance that you need. Um, such a heightened focus on things like data protection in particular at the moment and, um, and the wealth of data that HR and recruitment teams are exposed to. It's absolutely imperative that you identify the solutions that offer you the security and assurance that any data passing across them is correct is correctly collected, stored and managed. It can be really exciting and, and tempting proposition to, for a small um, startup to provide the solution to, to big businesses and enterprises. Um, many are, are simply underprepared or, or underqualified when it comes to guaranteeing um, correct compliance levels. Um, so an action point on, on this one is to, is to do your due diligence. Make sure the provider can offer the adequate data storage protection and security. Um, definitely don't be afraid to ask the hard questions. Make sure that they can step up in these areas because if suppliers can't deliver when it comes to data protection and compliance, it could end up really messy and, and reflect really badly on, on the organization. Point number three, um, can it be deployed within 24 hours? Now, for many of you, I'm sure that um, a big barrier to implementing new HR tech is the belief that the software will take too long to implement, set up, and, uh, and train staff. And this really shouldn't be the case. It shouldn't take any more than 24 hours to introduce a new solution. Otherwise, it's very unlikely to be offering this, the smart and an efficient service that, uh, that it promises. Um, when you find a solution that's a good fit right now, you want to be able to, to turn it on straight away, um, not go through a lengthy implementation process uh, and end up losing all the momentum, credibility and backing that you've worked so hard to generate across your business. Um, this might not always be the case. You know, if you're looking at a large ATS or, or HRIS deployment, um, it might be a little bit different and, and take a little bit longer. Um, but these are few and far between. 
Um, it should be relevant for the majority of tech products that you're assessing on a regular basis, that it can be deployed quickly. Um, apps that require a high level of, of customer setup, customization, and, and self-help are simply not going to fly in today's real-time market, but we need, um, we need quick turnaround and quick results. So the, the action point for this one is, is always ask potential implementation times. Test the suppliers and, um, and almost give them a bit of a carrot. So if we say yes today, how quickly can we start using the product or service and, and really sort of test them a little bit on that. Point number four, can it offer significant ROI? So I know it's our CFO's uh, favorite phrase and, and imagine that's echoed worldwide when financial departments are being asked to spend money. What is the return on investment? So technology that requires um, significant investment up front and offers a too distant or uncertain return should, should be shelved for the time being for, for those that have a track record demonstrating value um, and demonstrating value quickly to the HR team and, and the broader business they represent. You wanna make sure the solution you're interested in is proven to offer impressive returns and use evidence to support your argument when you're up against internal challenges. It, you know, if you're taking the lead on, on a particular product um, or particular solution, you want to be able to prove the effect the product or solution has immediately, because this will directly be associated with you, and you want to make sure that the decision you make is going to be the right one, because you know, it looks better for you internally. Um, this is a, it's a big action point. Um, ask for case studies. Um, or to speak to existing clients to find out what their return on investment has been. Um, ask suppliers for people to talk to, make introductions to people within your industry or within your circle um, so that you can speak directly to them without a salesperson being, being in, the, in, in the middle. And if they don't let you, this should, uh, this should raise some alarm bells. You know, this is something we pride ourselves on here at XREF is we really encourage any potential prospects to speak with current clients to not only explore the return on investment, but also the process improvement, any, um, any downfalls that they've seen or anything like that. We, we think that sort of the open and honesty side of that is, is really important to, to both prospects and, uh, and to clients. Point number five, can it integrate with other systems? Does it have an open API? So the ability of a HR solution to integrate is crucial in, in this day and age. There are platforms out there that claim to be a, a jack of all trades, um, whereas in reality, they're, they're not really that good at any one particular process or thing. Um, you, know, you really don't want to settle for this. You're, you're far better off going for a niche solution that can integrate with your existing ATS or HRIS or, or other solution so that your team can centralize processes further and improve, sorry, improve efficiencies with the best technology available. Where an open API comes in is it just allows um, solutions to talk to each other easily. If you haven't heard the term before, it's definitely one to really bring up whenever you're looking at, um, at new solutions within, within the HR and recruitment world. Um, <clears throat> an action point, ask who they currently integrate with. If you don't want to go down the, the technical talk of, of um, API chat, which, which a lot of us don't, just ask who they're interested, integrated with at the moment. If the list is long and they integrate with a number of different um, ACS systems and other partners and vendors, the chances are they're operating with an open API. But um, again, definitely don't be afraid to ask your, your sales personal representative um, what their API looks like and how easy it is to, to integrate. Um, so that brings us on to, to the next section. So another, another poll here. Um, out of interest, who, um, out of our listeners expects some form of growth or change in the business that will impact the HR recruitment team, say in the, in the next 12 months? Again, quite an open question, but you know, where, if there's gonna be some, some change or, um, or flux within, within the business that will directly affect your teams.
Excellent. So this seems pretty, um, not, not quite unanimous, but uh, pretty much all of you listening are saying yes, um, and, and those who aren't are saying unsure. You know, in this um, you know, ever-changing market, team um, businesses, are, you know, I think change management is such a, a huge part of, of what we're looking at. Um, what that brings us into is, can the business um, scale? Can the solution of the vendor scale with your business? We've already looked at if the product or solution is enterprise ready from a data protection and compliance perspective, but how can it adapt? Your HR challenges are unlikely to be the same from, from one week to the next, let alone year to year. Um, you need solutions that are flexible and nimble enough to meet the market demands you're facing. And as your organization grows and changes and adapts to, uh, to market demand, you need your solutions to be able to scale and adapt in line with that growth. Um, this might also mean if you're in a larger corporate company, um, you need to seek out solutions that can support you on a, on a global level and offer multi-language capabilities, for example. We, we've seen that here at XREF. You know, it's been a, a journey for us and, and we've had to adapt to not only moving internationally into different languages and, and different domains, but also clients telling us what, what might work best and really learning from um, what your clients are telling you because they're the, they're the experts in, in market. Um, the action point here is, I think, from a recruiter's perspective and, and HR professionals, we have a very complex set of skills um, that allow us to suss out suitable candidates fit for our business. My advice is to put these skills when, um, when you're assessing potential ven vendors. Use techniques that we learn in, in behavioral interviewing. Ask the salespeople you're dealing with uh, to give you examples of how they scale to meet demand or adapted to certain clients' ongoing needs. In my experience, when cross-utilizing these recruitment skills, HR and recruitment leaders become the best buyers as they're not afraid to, uh, to go into the detail um, with, with the suppliers. So that's, that's a huge piece for me, I think, is don't be afraid to, to really ask them to provide you with case studies of how they've adapted, of how they've grown, and how they've scaled the business. Um, and that leads us on to our, um, our final poll, um, which is, what are the common objections that you face from colleagues or internal stakeholders in regards to implementing new technology? So it does not integrate uh, with other systems, time to set up and train staff, cost implements or lack of willingness to change the current process. Again, seems um, quite uh, quite varied. One of the key ones that seems to be coming up is um, is lack of willingness to change the current process, and I think a lot of that links back to, to the return on investment uh, piece that we, we covered earlier, um, and really um, getting suppliers um, to show you return on investment they've seen in other organisations, and then using that internally to to show that yep, you know, change can take some time. Um, but, but the results speak for themselves, and this is what you know, other clients have seen, X, Y, Z, um, which I think I think is huge. What you can also do is we'll be sending um, a few documents out to accompany this uh, this webinar. One being a business case guide. Um, this is really useful to use internally when you're looking at implementing anything new and any new technology, um, and can really help in in how you structure trying to trying to get this stuff over the line. So now that we've um, gone through all the, the, six, the six main steps, the key to combating one of the main objections internally is the ability to demonstrate value with evidence pre-deployment and your own metrics post-deployment. Again, this is another chance for you to test your suppliers after the implementation. Ask them for regular reports and analysis on, on the performance of the product. Um, you know, that is if you, if you can't pull it directly. But again, don't be afraid to, to talk to suppliers and, and get them to do legwork post-deployment. A positive deployment will include reduced time uh, wasted due to minimized reliance on manual processes and data entry. 
a more productive HR team with, with greater success metrics um, in the area of their roles that really matter. You know, we want to make sure we spend more time on, on higher value tasks. Secure, consistent and reliable audit trails for all process transactions within, um, within the HR and recruitment world. And continual status updates for everyone involved in a recruitment process, offering a better experience for everybody, um, candidates included, which is obviously one of the you know, most important things we can do. So again, to wrap up our, our checklist, these are the six key points that, that we ran through today. Um, again, this has been imperative to the success of, of XRAF as we've, we've moved from you know, being very much a startup into, into a global organization. Um, and I think if you can make sure that your suppliers are ticking these six boxes, you can't go too far wrong. They're gonna be compliant enough, they're gonna be able to adapt to your, to your needs going to be able to be deployed quickly um, and uh, be able to integrate with any new um, systems and uh, ATSs that, that you implement over time. So thanks, um, thanks so much for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed the session and, um, and we'll take, um, take some positives away and, uh, and take this back into when you're assessing new, uh, new vendors. Um, after the webinar, we will be sending um, a, a recording of it, a recording of this webinar, the HR tech checklist, and as I mentioned, our guide to building a business case in HR technology. So we're gonna stay on, we've still got a few minutes left, so we're gonna stay on here for a little bit. So if you have any questions, please pop them into the question section and, um, and we'll try and answer as many as we can. If you don't have any questions, please, um, or would like to, to reach out via email, uh, please feel free to reach out to me directly, um, lewis.matthews at xref.com, or, or get in touch with any of, uh, of our team here, and um, we can try to answer one-on-one. -on -one. A couple of XREF specific questions coming in, but um, we'll, we'll reach out uh, individually for those um, so that we can, uh, we can wrap up the, um, the, the webinar in a moment. Well, it doesn't seem to be um, any other questions about the, about the checklist, guys. So I think what we'll do is, um, is wrap up there. And um, yeah, thanks so much for, for, for joining me and, uh, and look forward to, uh, to, to the next webinar. Thanks very much. Have a great day.